Hey, um, this is Stacia, and I'm going to share my round one game from the Mass Turkey <laughs> chess tournament played in November of 2021. My first round opponent was a kid, rated about 1550, but as it is the way with kids, <laughs> they're often uh, 1550 and rising quickly, so... Um, Definitely wasn't going to take this opponent lightly. Time control was g45, and my opponent opened with 1e4. So, okay, I went e5, and oops, what's going on here? Okay. And he went f4, King's Gambit. I was fairly happy to see this. I really like playing um, the King's Gambit as white or black. I think it's just interesting. And I took the pawn here. So I actually think, I almost played this during the game, but I didn't because I hadn't looked at it yet. But I actually think this move is probably slightly better. And the reason I'm saying that is because if you play this way and they take, and now we take, um, there's no like bishop's gambit anymore. Like I think this is, you know, just going to play right into my modern stuff. I'm checking with the engine really quick. Yeah, like one of the top moves here is knight f3. I guess they can do this still. I guess this is still an opening. But now it's just like a Falkbeer counter gambit. So, anyway, I think I'd prefer this position as opposed to the ones that you get. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's after f4. If we take here, now white has two main moves. This I, I don't mind, but this one, it's just tricky. I mean, they, they are allowing the check, but if they're playing this way, they are more than willing to go king f1 here. And these lines are actually quite dangerous for black still. <laughs> um, anyway. So I actually think I'll be playing d5 so that I don't have to learn those lines at all anymore. I'll just play this. And by the way, they can't really take here. And this is what I failed to realize during the game. If they take here, this just wins. Queen h4 check wins. If g3, we take. And that, that's going to win material. And otherwise, where does the king go, right? There's only this move, and we're going to take here. And I can't think of a worse position for white. <laughs> you know, this just looks horrible. Bishop c5 check. You can't go d4 because, you know, I just take it. <laughs> so, okay. So that's my little uh, opening finesse I'll be playing in the future, hopefully. And uh, But in the game, he did go knight f3, and I think this is fine. Engine's going off. All right, so I like the modern defense against this. I also play the shallop. I can play this move, which I, I think these positions are interesting too. The knight guards the pawn. Um, but d5 and he takes. Okay, and I think taking with the queen is a mistake because knight c3, so we just go knight to f6 here, and he played d4. So, I do know of a little trap in these lines that you guys might find interesting. So here we can take the pawn. Now, if I could play c4 here, then I'm not sure I'd want to do this. But white cannot really play c4. Now, if I recall correctly, if they go c4, we can throw in a check. All right, and if they block with the bishop, attacking our bishop, we can throw in this move, knight to e3. The bishop is pinned, so it cannot take, and we're attacking the queen. Now, the most logical looking move for white is this, right? Like, let's move the queen and get a fork. And it looks like that just wins material. Because even knight c6, I don't think works here. Maybe it does. I'm actually curious about knight c6, but I know the move to be bishop d7. And now it looks like, you know, queen here, but then we check. 
So, and actually, um, so they, they actually have to move the queen again, and this position's just like <laughs> really good for black. I mean, it says winning after queen b3. We're still winning because now knight c6, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, this is winning for some reason, but I can't tell you why. At least not yet. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go back to the game. In the game, after d4, I took here. So all of that is to say that he shouldn't go c4. Those lines are really good for black, but he did not. He played bishop d3. Now, this is not a common move in the king's gambit. So I was a little surprised to see it. I was expecting bishop c4, and I usually don't know what to do in these lines. So <laughs> I actually do want to figure that out. I think bishop b7 is the move, so I'm going to check with the engine. Yeah, bishop b7 is correct here. The thing is, I'd like to go bishop d6, but that would hang the knight, so can't do that. So we just go here, and we're just going to castle. Now, I was wondering, you know, can white just take the knight and take on f4? What's wrong with this? So let's have a look at it. So if they do this, oh, queen e4 check. Okay, I didn't realize that until right now. So they they probably need to castle first. So let's just say before they go forward with this plan, they castle. Um, I guess I would probably also castle unless I can guard the pawn somehow. You know... I am curious about g5, like, I'm curious about it, I don't know though, uh, I don't think g5 is good though, because, like, I don't know, I'm a little worried about this now, takes, takes, like rookie one or queenie two or something. Actually, knight c3 first, attack the queen. The queen must go back. Yeah, now it's saying knight takes g5, and if we take that... Yeah, I don't know. These lines look... Uh, I mean, it says black's a little better here, but I don't love the bland... Bland. I don't love the black pawn structure, and I don't like that the king is very weak. So, I mean, this is a king's gambit dream for white, I think. Look at black's development, or lack of development, I should say. Anyway, I know that I like to go down rabbit holes, but I wanted to learn something about that. But let's just continue with the game. So after, oh, okay, so after bishop d3... Um, you know, I thought this was a fairly creative move because, well, I think he's keeping c4 in reserve. So <laughs> these kids are smart. I, I really liked his approach here because this might be, you know, as Michael Joseph would say, home cooking, but it has some ideas and, you know, I need to figure it out over the board. So I think his idea is I want to play c4, but I don't want my bishop blocking it, and I want a castle first so that there's no check. I think that's pretty much what he wanted, and that's what he did. So here, I did play bishop d6. I realized that the knight is hanging, but it's not attacked. It's fine. If he went c4 here, I was still going to go bishop b4 check. Again, this is a little good for white, or for black, I mean. And um, hmm. one move I didn't consider here is queen e2 check. I would probably just go queen e7. Don't see what's wrong with that. And then he would take, and I could probably just take with a knight or a bishop. Might even take with the knight, just because c4 is going to come and then attack the bishop too. 
This also keeps the pond protected. Yeah, and this position's fine. So, so black's fine here. In fact, we're up a pond. Peter thinks white has compensation though. Okay. So after bishop d3, bishop d6, he just castled here. So I castled, and then he went c4. So I like this approach by him. Um, you know, he's attacking the knight. It's pretty annoying. c5 is on the menu, followed by bishop takes f4. So the question is, where do I put my knight? Um... I actually think that this is not a good move. This is not the best of the options. I thought c5, bishop e7, white gets to take here. And I mean, my main idea against the king's gambit is usually to hold on to that pawn because I know how annoying that is when you're playing white <laughs> from experience. All right, so I went here though and I'm never sure about these lines where you allow the bishop to take like this. Um, but I just figured this is a this is something for me. And the computer does agree. It says that black is better here. But I don't think it's so simple, you know. My development is lacking and white has a strong center, so you know, the computer says minus one for black. Like I'm just up a pawn, but I mean I don't understand that eval. I, I think it's fairly equal. Um, you know, I think white has compensation here. So, um, he went knight to c3, finishing his development. And now I need to develop my pieces. So I played here. Yeah. Now I think this move is a mistake because. I saw a ghost here, I'm not going to lie. I saw that if I go here, he might have this move. And I just didn't calculate it accurately. Because after there, there, king takes, knight check. I mean, I can just take the knight. I just take the knight and it guards the bishop. And, you know, I think I'm still waking up. <laughs> because... That's a tactic I'm familiar with, and I usually see it from the white side, not black. Maybe that's why I didn't see it, uh, or I didn't calculate it right. But probably I just need more coffee. <laughs> but okay, so I played here because I'm like, oh, I'm so smart. I see that tactic. But I mean, I would be, I should be happy to allow that tactic. I think this is the better move. You know, Th there's no way this works. I mean, black, black wins. So, um, instead here, and I think, you know, here I'm just asking for trouble, I think. I mean, I was calculating all these moves, but that's not going to help my time management, <laughs> which is the main reason I lose chess games. All right, so he played knight to e4. Pretty interesting move. So, I think his idea is... Um, Possibly to come in here, possibly to come in here, possibly to take. Um, I think all of that is logical. And I went bishop to f4. <laughs> yeah. So I'm playing this way because I was calculating everything. So, which is the way you should play chess, I guess. I'm like, hey, none of your discoveries work. If here, queen takes. If here, um, I take with the bishop. If here, I take with a bishop. If here, you know, you can't because that's illegal. <laughs> so none of the discoveries work at all. And um, yeah, I mean, and backwards ones are silly. So so I played here and I said, hey, I'm gonna, I'm going to hold on to my pawn. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> so he played knight c5. He said, I'm gonna take your pawn or your bishop. What are you going to do about that? I said, you're just a kid. You can't talk to me like that. 
bishop c8 so um i really wanted to sack the b pawn here but i don't think it works i mean if i try to sack it like i thought maybe c6 was a way to sack it you know if he takes here i could maybe try this move i thought i guess knight c5 again though probably just knight c5 so maybe i should do something different like queen e7 or maybe even queen c oh i want to stop knight c5 and i guess i really can't so yeah and that's kind of what i figured during that game like there's no happy way to do this and like he could just take here too like i actually like white here so I don't, I don't know about all that. So instead I played this move, which <laughs> once again, I'm, I'm just trying to hang on to my material, but I figured I'm going to kick the knight away and gain some tempos back. And I didn't see any way for white to crush me here. And yeah, guess what? Computer likes black, it says minus two for black. So my assessment was correct. Queen c2, keeping the initiative. Um, I played h6. Wow. So I was analyzing. Actually, Brian Castro uh, visited me at the tournament, which was really nice uh, to see him. And we looked over this game. I'm pretty sure he said that he liked the move g6 instead. And, you know, we have these ideas. And he thought this is a better approach turns out that was absolutely correct that is what the engine wants it says that's the only way well aside from f5 which looks a little ambitious um to keep the advantage for black so h6 like almost loses all the advantage i had which is just fascinating to me wow okay I mean, my thought is I want to control the square some more, but you know what H, you know, one downside of H six though, which I was aware of is that I think my Bishop often will want to come here to continue guarding this pawn. It's also possible G three might be a thing. And then when I retreat, they could take the Bishop followed by, you know, something taking the pawn. So I think, you know, for that reason, G six, is a much better approach here. But I played here. All right, he got his last piece into the game, Paul Morphy style, and I went knight c6. I need to develop my pieces, there's just no doubt about it. And I figured this comes with tempo, so let's do this. And I really wanted to play here. Not sure that's a real threat though, because I do think he has like check, king h7, and possibly move the queen somewhere. Although I am really curious about f5 then. I don't know. I'm seeing like queen e4, f5, check. Oh, there's no check. Huh. So maybe it is a threat. So he went here. Okay. So... Guarding his pawn, avoiding knight before. All right, so um, here I played b6, kicking the knight. I actually thought knight b3 was a bit inaccurate during the game at first. And then when I realized what his idea was, I thought it was fairly strong. Now I see it's the top engine move, so kudos to my opponent. Uh, his idea was, you know, to come to b3. The knight temporarily, um, you know, safeguards the d4 pawn, which is nice for white. But his real idea was to maneuver the knight to e2, where it attacks the bishop, safeguards the pawn again, and blockades my, my pawn. Just a very nice positional idea that he came up with here. So, I mean, I do think it's debatable because 
black will have time to finish development here but i guess you know this is what the engine likes too and now here's my big blunder of the game my big blunder of the game is rook to e8 <laughs> the move itself is fine you know it's the top engine move but i had 14 minutes left my opponent had like 16 minutes left and i spent seven minutes on rookie a and i just have no explanation for that i really don't it was the first move i thought of i could have played it in 10 seconds and then i must have just looked at a million things got lost in thought and spent seven minutes <laughs> I don't know why I fall into a trance during chess games, but that is definitely the source of my time management issues. So, uh, yeah, not going to win rapid chess doing that. So, knight to c1, I went bishop here, completing development, and now knight e2 landed on the board. So now I'm just in time pressure here. I think in this moment... I will let you know that I had um, <laughs> one minute left. Oh, I remember what I was doing. I was looking at sacrifices. <laughs> I was trying to figure out a way to um, distract the knight, take here, and after king takes, I was dying to play queen check. Now, that would pick up the rook as long as I could distract this rook and distract the queen. And I was trying to figure out a way to do that. But, you know, while I was doing that, I just used up all my time. And then when I saw there wasn't a way, then I was just down on the clock. So, yeah, that was the, that was the mistake, is to look at that. In slow time control chess, absolutely you should do that. And rapid chess, no. It's just hard for me to change my ways. I took here. I was in time pressure. I don't think I would do this move. When I'm in time pressure, I am more um, willing to trade things, which is not a good way to play chess. He took here, which I think is correct. I went bishop e4. d5, which I think is correct. Okay, and knight a5, and now I'm just trying to make quick moves that make sense. b4, knight b7, knight e5. Seemed like a pretty good move. The knight is going to come to c6, but in the meantime, he's attacking f7. So I played this move. I was actually a little afraid of um, c5 here. If c5, I mean, do I have, like, knight b5? The queen must continue guarding the knight. So, maybe they can just take the pawn. That does step into a pin, however. Wow, and then if f6 is their um, knight c6, you know, it's like this is the part of the game where I needed to use my time. But instead, I had to move instantly, and my opponent had time if he wanted it. So, queen g5, I played here. Knight f3, I saw that attack my queen. Rook over. Very interesting position here. Um, I thought about trading rooks. I didn't really want to see the knight come to e5. So I played f6. Computer actually does like this. Now I thought if rook takes, I might do something like this. Computer says no problem. Yeah, I guess... I mean, I don't know. I would I would probably, you know, take that. And then it says C5 here. Okay, yeah, it's still complicated. Computer likes black. So, but I went here, and he put his rook on E6. 
and I reached for my rook on e8, and I took the white rook, and then my opponent said good game, because I actually flagged. <laughs> How horrible is that? I flagged. Yeah, I think after this, I was making sure that I could win this pawn, because if I don't win that pawn, I'm in trouble, but if I'm going to win that pawn, I'm probably at least equal, maybe better. And turns out I was right. It's equal. But it's not equal if you flag, so. Yeah. Um, I'm not all that unhappy with how I played this game. I think I played it fairly well. But the time management thing is uh, always an issue for me. I don't think playing King's Island Open helped my time management. I think it made it worse. But it probably is making my chess better. So, you know, this is the, um, the constant issue that I wrestle with is that, you know, what do I want to do? Do I want to improve at chess or do I want to win games and collect rating points? And out of those two things, when I ask my coaches, coaches, <laughs> it's funny that I have more than one, um, you know, my main coach, Michael Jolson, he basically says, lose on time, you know, calculate, play good moves, enjoy the game. That's what he says. He said, so you lose on time, who cares? And his idea with that is it's more important to improve at chess and enjoy chess than it is to you know, just try to win games. And um, he's probably right. You know, I have been improving at chess. Um, but there's part of me that's like, hey, I want to reach a new high rating. And when I lose a game like this, I'm not going to reach my new high rating. So then part of me is like, ooh, I just need to learn to play faster. I need to learn to, you know, just make moves. But that's not necessarily going to help my chess. So I'm always wrestling with this. Should I focus hard on playing faster or should I not? And um, I don't know. I think I'm happy being a slow time control player for now. I feel like I should continue improving at chess. And... Um, so, so yeah, so, you know, I lost this game, so what? I think I played fairly well, and, um, yeah, I'm going to continue what I'm doing. Now, if I really want to win these games, I've got to play faster, but nothing new with that. So I'll have to train and figure out if I want to uh, continue with that. So, anyway, I definitely rambled at the end, so you can tell I'm probably, you know, Anytime I lose, I'm not happy, so I have to wrestle with that and figure out what I want to do as a result. So there you go. I uh, hope you enjoyed the game, and I will be back with the next one.